It's not just saying, hey, I'm, I'm a sports chiropractor. Come see me. I know you're injured. It's like, wait a minute. I understand the golfer's body. I understand the language. So now I can communicate with that coach. And oh, by the way, I've got a fitness professional that understands golf as well. Well, now you've got a huge team that actually amplifies you in your community. All right. And as promised, I am here with Dr. Sean Drake. I've been looking forward to this conversation for quite a while. So, Sean, thanks for taking some time. Jeff, thanks for having us. You got it. So I want to kick it off with a heavy hitter question. What is the philosophy behind TBI, on base, and racket fit? What kind of unifies all amongst the umbrella of what you're into and where you guys are going? Yeah, I think the big thing that uh, would encompass us is that no athlete is the same as another athlete. You know, And whether it's baseball, tennis, um, golf, lacrosse, other sports that we're going into, that there's an infinite number of ways for these athletes to play these sports but there's one way for all of them to do this efficiently, and it's based upon how their body can actually work or what they can physically do. And so from the chiropractic perspective, I think that's a really, really, really big thing that we've got to own because a lot of times we're not looking at athletes in the sense of saying, hey, you know, you're a runner. I'm going to treat you like a runner or, you know, I'm just going to I don't know what sport you're doing, but I'm, I'm in sports chiropractic. So I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and treat you. Right. I think being specific is is very interesting, and we're going to dive down some rabbit holes on that. But before we do, let me peel it way, way back. How did you first become interested in chiropractic? So I had a very unique, um, almost like a lot of chiropractors that get into chiropractic. I had a personal story. Uh, I got injured by a semi-truck. I was driving down I-75 when I was in college at Florida State, and I got hit by you know a semi. and My truck flipped three times, landed in a tree. Not some beats, you know, um, elaborate, but developed ulcerative colitis. Um, I was running track and field at the time. I was doing a lot of other different things. And unfortunately, due to this car accident and injuries, I basically wasn't able to run. I had to pull out of other, you know, organizations I was in. And it took probably two years through the pain management model of seeing, you know, physio, MD, pain management, MD, uh, oxycodone, Zoloft, you know, um, Azacol, Prenazone, all these different things until I moved to Tampa. And I met a chiropractor that kind of said, hey, you know what, let's see how you're doing structurally. And within, you know, three to six weeks, I was moving better than I've ever moved before. But then I actually, you know, had a stool, which I hadn't had in two years. And I was like, wait a minute, this is weird. <laughs> and so I started to realize, okay, maybe there is something to this chiropractic thing and said, this is what I want to do. So I decided to go to chiropractic college. I love it. And, and along that path, what are potentially some unique choices or into, you know, moments in time that kind of made you who you are today? Because obviously there's a huge gap between what you went through then and where you're at and where you're going today. What are maybe a few of those key moments that you've experienced throughout your journey? I think key moments, um, mentorship was big. Being in the right places at the right time, I think, really helped bless me in, in the career that I have right now. Um, and understanding chiropractic in the way that I understand chiropractic now. Uh, so I would say definitely mentorship and environment. Um, number two, uh, struggles and trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you open a practice or, you know, you move to a community that you think, okay, this is going to be where I'm going to settle or what's going to happen. And things get kind of, you know, thrown in the washing machine. And sometimes, you know, they bleed into the clothes or, you know, you're like, well, I'm going to go ahead and just give those away to Goodwill. Or it's like, okay, I learned how to wash clothes better. And so, you know, those trials and tribulations of practice and saying, okay, this isn't working right. Like what I thought was working is not really the case. And then going out and finding, going back to that first part is the right mentors and the right people to understand systems and really getting more efficient in practice are the two things that I think were some of the you know things that helped me. I think that that's really interesting because, you know, as I, we, we met up just a couple months back out in San Diego and your stomping grounds. And, you know, as I was hearing you, you know, talk about what you're into and really the breadth and depth of that is awe inspiring, to be honest with you. And, and as docs are listening to this and, you know, they know what, what you're associated with, they know where you've taught, you know, they know TPI, on base racket fit. These are, you know, growing and really, you know, from growing to well established, you know, brands in the movement space and chiropractic in particular. Uh, as you've seen a lot of docs kind of come through those programs, learn the training, and really get back in their communities, what are some of the biggest challenges you've seen? docs have when they start a career maybe with a focus on sports? I think, you know, the big, the big stumbling block a lot of docs get into 
is that they say, hey, I want to be a pediatric chiro or I want to be a um, sports chiropractor. And since we're talking about sports today, I'll, I'll go in depth on that. Um, but then they're like, I've got to go after the professional. And they think that, oh, I got to go work for a pro team or I've got to go, you know, be a part of the Olympic committee and, and try to go, you know, to the Olympics. And for people that have a passion for that, that's an amazing opportunity. And, and I definitely encourage it for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm guilty in the sense that I've done a lot of that stuff. But some of the pitfalls that come with that is, you know, time away from the practice. So you're closing your practice down. You're losing money there. Um, you know, you're paying to go to a lot of these events. And so a lot of these people don't realize a lot of these pro opportunities aren't actually paid for. You know, it's coming out of your pocket. It's coming out of your time. It's coming out of your volunteer. Now, on the opposite end, those are great for marketing when you come home, you know, in your community. But I think that if we actually got docs starting to think about a sports focused community practice, where they can take these applications that are being done in the professional level. And, you know, the number one issue right now for chiropractors is student loans. And, you know, I tell a lot of my buddies that are, you know, getting into sports chiropractic and they want to go do this stuff. I'm like, Hey, use these certifications to build your practice up, pay your loans down. And then when you have that free time and you've got that establishment, doors are going to open and opportunities are going to happen. But the stress that's on, on these, you know, young students coming out and docs that are in field, I'm like, how can I help you become an expert in your community? So that one, you can get paid for it. Two, that you're enjoying it. And then three, you can open up any opportunity you want. Yeah, I, I love where you went with that because, you know, I, there's so many, you know, what I'll call educational processes out there for chiropractors that quite frankly, just don't equate to anything that's tangible. Yes, you get the knowledge and that's potentially better than nothing. But often it's at the expense of all this crazy amount of time. And quite frankly, you know, I've seen a lot of people with a lot of letters after their last name that had challenged, you know, transforming that into anything that would that would kind of work in their community. I, I don't know. Has that been your experience or just unpack a little bit of, of you, maybe your experience with that? People who have all this training but don't know how to translate it. And, and to me, you know, that's where a lot of your passion picked up. But uh, I'll yeah. let you explain no, 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 I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, again, I'm guilty. I have too many letters behind my names. And, and like, you know, I thought, hey, I have to go get this certification. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I, I honestly think, Jeff, that we need to take it back one step further and say, let's get back to basics. Um, you know, getting results in your practice is the number one way to build reputation and becoming an expert, right? And so we can go get all these letters and we can take all these programs. But if we don't apply that knowledge or – we're applying the wrong knowledge. That's where we kind of fall into trouble. And so say you go to a course and, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk about rock tape for a second because I think they're doing a really great job with their educational platform at the moment. Um, so you get FMT certified. Well, nobody in the community knows what FMT is, but the fact of the knowledge and what you take in that course, if you go back and apply it and you actually say, Hey, here's how taping can help your performance. And you do a workshop. Now you're bringing that expert brand into your community for one, you're becoming the expert. So now let's take that one step further. Now say you go get TPI. So that's Titleist Performance Institute. You've got an overall brand of Titleist, which if you're in the golfing world, you, you know that name. It's the number one golf ball that gets played with every week. But now for the golf pros in the area or players that are getting in, it's not just saying, hey, I'm, I'm a sports chiropractor. Come see me. I know you're injured. It's like, wait a minute. I understand the golfer's body. I understand the language. So now I can communicate with that coach. And oh, by the way, I've got a fitness professional that understands golf as well. And I get to be the expert in my field. I get to work with the coach who's going to drive players to me. And that fitness professional is going to help do the corrective exercises. Say you're a chiro that doesn't want to do that. And you just want to stick with the mobility work. Well, now you've got a huge team that actually amplifies you in your community. I think that's so important because it, it dives into really, you know, marketing as a whole, right? Where if you're speaking to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. So, yeah. you know, as a, as a chiropractor in general, a lot of people are like, I don't know what chiropractic is, like general public, right? Utilization is not 90%. Let's put it that way. Exactly. And then when you break down even within sports chiropractic, I think you said it very well. You know, there's a pretty wide berth, but when you really start to become niche focused, it gives you the opportunity and whether that's a, you know, a pros pro, whether that's a local pro or whether those are the individuals who are just looking to like hit it on Sundays and stay, you know, in the game of life, no pun intended, but enjoy yeah. those benefits. You can really craft an entire message of your practice, which I would think would really help you be able to grow. Is that what you've seen as well? And legacy, right? Yeah. That, that legacy of being, I mean, most chiropractors when you're, when you're in school and, and maybe I don't know if this was in your case, but 
when we were talking, like you hear about those Kairos that are doing amazing things in their community, right? And you hear these stories of all these patients that are getting these miracle, you know, things happening to them. Well, I love what you just said a second ago, instead of going after all these things, getting that niche, because now you, you would not believe how many people that I know in the sports chiropractic world that are working, going to events and doing, and I was, I was guilty of this, doing events that didn't correlate back to my practice community when I came home. And so I'm like, they're like, well, it's cool. You're working with, you know, this sport and this sport, I'm not going to mention them. Uh, but wait a second, you know, what have you done with, you know, baseball? What have you done with, you know, lacrosse in our area? What do you know about these? And, you know, coming from a track and field background and soccer and swimming, and I'm like, I don't, I honestly don't know much about it. And so I had to get real and say, okay, well, you know, what is my market? And instead of being the guy that says, Hey, I've, I've got to go stand on the sideline. I started saying, well, I want to understand their performance side. And so instead of staying there on a Friday night, they were coming to me, you know, Friday during the day before they played, or they came on that Saturday morning to get, you know, work done. But it's changing that conversation about injury into performance and, and saying, Hey, I don't need to always be on the emergency side. I can be on that performance side. And, and that's a, that's a big key concept to coming back to the practice. Yeah. I think you stole a look at my notes because you skipped one question ahead, oh, I'm <laughs> that sorry. A, but that's exactly where I'm going. And, and you and I had a, I had a short conversation about this and I'd love to unpack that and explore it. Pain versus performance. I think there's a lot of what I'll call evidence-informed and evidence-based docs out there who swing the pendulum back so far the other way. All they focus is on pain relief, and it shortchanges their practice. It shortchanges the people in their community. And it's just, I mean, there's, there's a role out there, and there's a need for a variety of different types of docs. But I've seen you know, a, maybe a backlash against wellness, quote-unquote, to the point where it becomes so myopic it becomes impossible to really get anything done from a practice perspective. And quite frankly, performance, I think, is where we should live. I'd love to hear your thoughts and just un unpack sort of, again, what you've seen, what you've experienced, and some of where I know you're going to go with it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I truly feel um, we live in a, a pain model, right? So if you look at the hourglass of, of TPI, on base University, or Racket Fit, or Functional Movement Systems, um, we have a, we have an hourglass that we talk about and all the trainers and coaches know that, you know, if they come in at that entry level of the FMS, that as long as they have those movements or wherever they can go up into that functional capacity screen, then they can go into like the upper tier levels. Mm -hmm. But if there's pain, they're going to send down to us. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting referred to them. We need to create that conversation with the trainers and the coaches so they understand, okay, when somebody's in pain, they definitely need to be taken care of by a medical provider such as a Cairo, you know? Um, but I think the big thing that Kairos miss a lot of times is that we get in this model of being so fear-based in the sense of, oh, well, is it a meniscal tear? And we get so focused on that symptom that we forget about the actual fundamental movements of the body and the patterns of the body. And if we look at society at the moment, let's just face it. We're in the most dysfunctional patterns we've ever been in. We're the most toxic we've ever been in. And we start thinking, okay, well, I only want you in when you're in pain. Well, I'm sorry. Most of these people are, if we're just going after pain, they're definitely drugged up. You know, they're using other things to cover up that pain. Now they have tools like CBD and other things to where maybe they're not going to feel the pain because it's going to block the CB1 and CB2 receptors. So if that's the model that we're going after, well, we're going to miss a whole lot of people when we could say objectively, what if, and, and this is a what if, right? But what if we could say in the sports world or even in the functional, say human performance, because that's what, you know, we do. I got a patient that walks in, they don't have pain, but objectively I can put you through a screen or now an assessment to see if you can actually move functionally, neurologically. And if you can't, that's objective enough to me to say, okay, you probably need care or, you know, possibility you need care. Right. And then work on that about improving the life for that per for physiological performance, not just the neurological and the nociceptive pain performance. Right. Um, so I think the best way to answer your question from that would be, I really think that we need to take a step back sometimes because there's some great chiros that they're phenomenal with like those chronic pain or acute pain patients. Um, but most of my athletes that are coming to me, they're not coming to me with pain. You know, they're coming to me because they're like, look, I need this much of a, of the dial turn. So that way I can increase my performance or I have that chance of that scholarship or I have that chance to beat the other girls in the 3-0 tennis tournament. You know what I mean? and brag about the gold ball.
Well, and that's the key is you brought it up. It's what are the patient goals and where are they trying to go? And that's the thing. It's just if if you're not doing a 100% pain model, it doesn't mean you'll come in and get crunched three times a week for the rest of your life. Like there, you know, there's just, there's so much nuance there and it's what's the patient's goals and expectations as you brought up, you know, what are the screening tools that you utilize? Quite frankly, you know, for me going through school, like I just didn't get a lot of that and I didn't seek it out. So like, that's a short, short place for me. And I'm sure a lot of other docs out there as well. I, you know, obviously I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kind of you know, pipe up for you right now. That's where you guys come in with a lot of this. Yeah. But the bottom line is, you know, having that tool set and that skill set enables you to have the confidence to, you know, to speak about it and really be able to guide people beyond just the, you know, just the adjustment itself. The adjustment, while one of the most powerful things a chiropractor can do bar none, when Absolutely. you have that as part of your toolkit and you have other ways to look at it specifically related to movement, it just gives you so much more opportunity to then narrow your niche as you understand what do I like better? Who are the people that I'm resonating with? I'm sure you see that with the people that, you know, you're kind of, you know, students and colleagues and mentors all day, every day. Absolutely. And, and I love on one of our instructors from base, you always talks about, you know, becoming the sniper. And, you know, that's if, if you're a really great chiropractor, I think that in, in whether you're saying, you know, subluxation, manipulation, or dysfunction, or malposition, however you want to talk about the joint or the tissue, if you can get to that primary issue, and you have a, a system that really gets to that primary, results go up, right? And, and I think that's what it's about, is getting better at your craft, and bringing tools in that if you want to go after, say you freaking, you like crew, go find the best person in the world that understands crew, and go learn from them about those, those fundamental movements, and what those athletes are doing, or Say you've got another thing that you want to get into. Find the people that are doing it. Learn about it because that's only going to make you better in your exam and, and not only that but in your treatment plan. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that I've noticed specifically over the past you know, 10 years, I mean I graduated in 2006 so it's been 12, 13 years. But specifically over the last 10 and then accelerated over the last five is really this melding. Now, I, I sort of from the outside in look at it and think CrossFit's played a huge role in that in terms of you know what I'll just loosely call human performance, sports performance, and chiropractic yeah. opportunities to practice within some of those, those boxes, those gyms, et cetera. Um, but what have you seen as far as some of the biggest opportunities? We talked challenges earlier, but maybe some mm-hmm. of the biggest opportunities currently available in the, in the sports chiropractic realm. Yeah, I, I think with any challenge comes awesome opportunities, right? Because we've got to adapt. And so what we've seen just, uh, you know, I can, I can only speak from what I know, right. Um, you know, really seeing a lot on the extreme sports side. So whether it was due to her and nitro circus and X games and that type of thing, chiropractors are getting a lot of great opportunities with these type of athletes. A lot of it's that trauma side that we, you know, we're talking about, but even within that now it's opened this door for that performance. You, you know, we've got extreme sports coming to the Olympics in 2020. So I think it's cool because those are new opportunities, right? Um, but when we look at what chiropractic's doing right now in, in the world, you know, we've got the professional baseball chiropractic society. Um, and since we launched on base, you, we've had a lot of their people come through and a lot of the teams are using it. So now you've, you've got, a, in my opinion, probably one of the coolest feeder systems ever for chiropractors. If you want to get involved in baseball, because they've got their, you know, they've got their big league. Now they've got triple, double, single A, then they've got farm teams. They've got all this situation where they're looking for quality chiropractors that can say, hey, to come in but that they can trust that one, know the language of a hitter and pitcher that aren't going to hurt them. Two, more importantly, that are willing to understand that, you know, they're on the sideline to the coach. The coach is the driver of that athlete. So they need to know what's being asked instead of saying this is what needs to be done. Um, the football, you know, if we look at the professional um, football, you know, chiropractic society, what they've done, you know, we've got the first female ever in the NFL with the Lions, I think that's just unbelievable. Um, You look at the diversity for women to step into chiropractic and sports right now, and it's just amazing. Um, And then you look at, uh, obviously golf, I can go down that route, but let's talk about some offshoots. You know, softball, huge growing thing. So, um, you know, we're going into fast pitch, but I've already got coaches calling me saying, hey, what we've seen, what you've been able to do already with athletes in baseball, are you going to be able to help refer, you know, I was with the, you know, somebody from UCLA yesterday, um, speaking at a conference and they're like, Hey, can you come in and do you have somebody local? So there's all these cool opportunities and people are always saying, well, you know, you're always on the road and why aren't you in practice? And I get, and sometimes it's, it's humbling because it's like, man, I miss being in practice. I'm like, should I be in practice? 
But then I, I get this opportunity to say, I get to work with the best people in the world to create education that you can take back to your community. We can affect thousands of, of patients and athletes around the world. Um, and for those that want to get involved in the Olympics or get involved in a high, um, high energy world games, you know, you don't have to always necessarily be the person that goes through all these different things. If you're good at what you do, the athlete's going to ask for you. So I think the biggest thing is if, if you want to get involved in that sport world, just get better at getting results. And, you know, people are going to be like, Hey, I want you to come with me. By the way, here's your credential. You know, I just had a friend text me from Wimbledon today during the Venus match in Coco. I don't know if you got to watch that. Um, but you had a 15 year old that beats Venus Williams. Right. Oh, wow. And you know, I've got a friend of mine who's a physiotherapist that she's there right now. And she's texting me from there and she's just like, holy cow, like this whole sports, this tennis world blowing up. And when I say it's blowing up, like tennis is, is so far behind and baseball was so far behind of connecting the body to the sport. And now they're starting to see it and they're asking questions. They're like, well, do you have somebody here? I mean, we probably get, you know, 50 calls a week being like, do you have a chiropractor in our town? I'm like, right now I don't have to be certified, you know? So there's a lot of really cool things that are happening. I love it. And, and kind of tying into that, what would be maybe one thing you wish someone had shared with you earlier in your career? Maybe a, maybe a piece of advice that either you wish you got, you got a little bit later on than you would have liked, or maybe even something you'd impart on some of the younger docs listening, who are maybe a landmine they can avoid. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really, there, there's two, there's two parts to this. One, I, I think I wish somebody would have been better at teaching me diagnostics. Okay. Um, you know, for me, the SFMA really changed my life on how I on how I look at a human performance person. Period, and I, and I say this just as my clients, right? Understanding motor control versus whether it's a joint or a tissue, and really getting specific with it, um, and create and having a system instead yeah. of just being like, "Hey, here's 20 techniques. Figure out how to use them." Right. Um, I think that would be number one: is is find a system that you are comfortable with because. And every single technique I can tell you right now, those the special, the best in their techniques are the ones that own their system. They don't get out of their system. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the ones that start to like move things around and start to say, I'm going to pull this from here. I'm going to pull this from here that we maybe sometimes tend to miss some things and then we don't get the result that we want. So that'd be number one. Um, and I think the second thing that I wish somebody would have, you know, told me is you don't have to. You don't have to have this big giant practice right out of practice, out of school you can, you can grow humbly and keep your, keep your costs down. You know what I mean? Really like, cause with a table and, and, you know, being able to refer to an x-ray, you know, center or whatever you need to do, but to be humble and say, look, I don't need to have all this stuff and, and grow slowly, uh, instead of stressing yourself out financially and taking out these extra loans on a business. And if you have it awesome, but I really think that like, you know, getting a niche, um, understanding the system and then being humble with your finances when you get out of school. I think those are very, very good points, and I, I would I would concur with a few of those. <laughs> I could have used some some better uh, some better guidance on those early as well. So I guess looking forward, maybe what are some goals that you have over the next, whether personally or whether with Unbase U, with Rocket Fit, with TPI, maybe over the next twelve months, and then I'm going to have you look way forward, like ten years. Okay. What are some things that you're looking forward to, either you know have as uh, long term goals, and maybe a couple short terms as well. I think the big thing right now is um, I'll speak on behalf of OnBaseU and RacketFit at the moment is just continuing to create the relationships um, and seeing results. So, you know, we're constantly working with pro teams. Um, the USPTA is a sponsor of ours for our RacketFit program domestically, and they've done a really good job. And, and what's great about our program is that if you get certified, now you're certified with the USPTA. And so getting chiropractors involved in their communities with the USPTA teaching professionals um, and the USPTA and the USTA have now come together on this accreditation for coaching. And now you have this brand new market opened up to you automatically. Um, so continue to help grow that relationship um, for one, our profession and the on-base youth sector. Uh, you know, we've got so much stuff going on over the next year with the you know baseball coaching association, the national fast pitching association and being able to create that bridge from those coaches to these individuals in practice. I think that those relationship buildings are huge. Personally, um, I want to improve my tennis game. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's go. one of those things, uh, you know, I, the more I, I'm involved in the sport, I realize how many players there are that need help. 
Um, and so by being around it and seeing it and like today, you know, I was up in Irvine yesterday speaking at a conference on tennis and, and just seeing the light bulbs going off in these coaches heads and then working with a couple of players today that, you know, they look physically fit They're you know, their coaches think they're physically fit. And then within five minutes, we can show them they've got some deficiencies. And they're like, well, now who do I go see? And I'm like, well, I'm on the road a lot. So let me, let me find out for you. Right. Um, so that's the big thing is, is really one improving chiropractic worldwide when it comes to sports performance, not just the pain model, really making experts known around the world as, Hey, chiropractors are, are specialists in neurology, specialists in functional movement, specialists in, you know, getting that next edge. So that would be where I, I want to see us in the next year. Okay. And, and we're going global as well. We're going to be launching in, uh, five different countries. That is so cool. And I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm heading out to uh, Chicago, uh, August. I'll be seeing you out for on base. You, I'm going to get my, uh, get my hands dirty and see how little I know <laughs> as we go on. It's going to be fun. But I'm, uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I know, you know, Rick and, and what you've done with those guys over at the professional baseball carbide society has been, been awesome. And, and I really commend you on, on, we barely even were able to, you know, skim the surface here on, on again, probably the breadth and depth of, of what you've been through and, and where you're you're going, but I uh, really appreciate it. And for the docs out there listening, where can they go to learn more about you and, and kind of see the progress of those goals you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, they can go to OnBaseU, so O N B A S E U dot com, and that they can do the pitching, hitting. We're launching uh, softball in the fall. Then go to RacketFit, R A C Q U E T Fit dot com. Um, see our, all of our stuff for our serve. We're launching ground strokes in the fall. Uh, for TPI, you can go to my TPI if you want to get involved in the golf portion. Um, and then, you know, so you can go to there. You can always reach out to me on my email. Uh, it's, you know, Sean, S E A N dot Drake at my TPI.com or the same thing at racket fit or at on base you, awesome. uh, and then they can always reach out there as well. Thank you so much. I will link all of that in the show notes and episode notes. So anybody listening on iTunes, you can just click down below and head on over. And Sean, we're going to have to make a part two out of this, but I really appreciate part one. Yeah, yeah. Can I hit one more thing? Of course. I think it's really important. Um, I'm excited to announce, you know, we've we've launched, uh, Josh, Dr. Josh Sadley is one of our instructors as well. And, you know, we launched at Cleveland Chiropractic College with our on base U and our MyTPI. And you, you had thrown out the question earlier, like we want to talk a little bit further out and yeah. how's this going to affect chiropractic. Um, I'm, I'm excited to announce we're launching at three different schools with our, our specialty techniques. Um, so with on base, you racket fit and TPI. So these students, before they graduate, they're actually going to be able to go through the program in the curriculum. Um, and they're certified when they get out. So while they're in school, they're going to be able to help out docs that are local and, you know, start, they're going to be masters and experts by the time they get out. So, that's making an impact in a way that I think that, you know, we, we couldn't do anywhere else. That is awesome. Congrats. I'm sure that was a, uh, that was a uh, feat of nature to get accomplished. <laughs> so that is, yeah. yeah, that, that is awesome. So what's, uh, and where's the best place for docs to be able to keep up with that? If, if a student has a question, should they just shoot you an email and, and you can kind of, where, 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 where are we going to be hearing about that? I guess. Yeah. So all of our handles from Instagram to Facebook, um, you know, again, to my email, if you're a doc and you're looking for mentors or mentees, you know, somebody to mentor and you've gone through one of our programs, we're in, uh, you know, we also, every one of our programs is certified for 13 hours of chiropractic credits. Um, so I think that's a huge thing for docs cause they're like, you know, uh, you look at all these certifications that you spend money on. And sometimes, like you said, you know, you come home, you don't know how to apply it. Uh, the docs, I can tell you right now that are applying it. I got a text yesterday from a guy that, you know, works at LSU and he was out working track and field, but he's working with the soft, their baseball team now. And he's like, it's unreal to see how quickly it's helped his practice and reputation. I love that. So. That's, that's powerful. And, and that's really what, what we need, right? I mean, a, as a profession, we need the ability to, to get out there and, and grow our practices. We don't have 500,000 chiropractors out there. And quite frankly, the stats I've seen on docs who are really challenged in those first few years after they get out are just staggering. And I think programs that really emphasize practical application of knowledge and specifically yeah. how that can tie to practice growth, how it can tie to relationships, trust and rapport are so key. And and I've really seen nothing but that with what you guys have been able to accomplish. So, you know, kudos on that because I can definitely understand that. It ain't easy. <laughs> no, it's not. And thanks for everything you do too, man. I mean, you know, without your your following and, and your energy, um, 
we couldn't make the wavelengths that we do. So I think that, you know, collaboration is really big and, you know, grateful for you and, and grateful for everything you're doing. My, my pleasure. And we'll, uh, I'll be seeing you soon. All right, bro. Hey, what's going on? If you loved that video, be sure to subscribe to this channel. The Evidence Based Chiropractor puts out videos all the time at the intersection of marketing and research, showing you how to grow your practice while also growing your knowledge base. So if you liked it, be sure to comment down below or hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.